we know as Orthodox Christians that at baptism, mm -hmm. each of us has an appointed guardian angel. Mm -hmm. but, but do non-Orthodox have angels that accompany them? What do the fathers teach about this? Uh, <laughs> that's a great question, Father. I, I will answer uh, something that St. Ambrose says and St. Jerome. So I cannot talk about the individual, the unbaptized Christian, but we do know that angels are involved in the, in the affairs of humanity. They try to guide humanity to knowledge of God. So of course we have the chosen people of God. And when I say the chosen people, I mean in the Old Testament and the New Testament, I want people to understand my references to the Israel of God, we are the Israel of God. It's the one and the same. There's not an old Israel and a new Israel. It's we were grafted on after the coming of Christ. So we continue to be the Israel. Um, the people of God, uh, the, the Christians today, you know, we obviously have the Archangel Michael as the overall protector of them. We each have our guardian angel. But with the other non-baptized uh, Christians, there is no reason to think that there's no angelic activity because the whole purpose of angels is try to steer people on the path of right on the path of the right. And I mean, every human being has a conscience. I mean, no matter, you know, when someone's about to do something, they, you know, their heart will go into this, this thinking, do I do this? Shouldn't I do it? I mean, especially if it's something that's not appropriate, which would be an indicator for me from the little I've read that these are the voices of angels that whisper, that try to whisper in you, that try to literally make you choose the right thing. Now, I'm going to take it to a, uh, an additional level. We know that the nations of, of the world, even the ancient Babylonian Empire, the Persian, they had their guardian angels. So a guardian angel was appointed for the very nation. And these nations were idolatrous nations. They, were, they did everything that God hated. Uh, I hate to use the word hated, but the, everything that God forbade in this most uh, holy and sacred law. Um, despite this, they had an angel. And St. Ambrose of Milan... Uh, I've, I always have a hard time follow, finding this, but he says, first of all, St. Jerome says something similar, but St. Ambrose says that when the edict had come from Cyrus for the Jews to pick up and return uh, to Jerusalem, the guardian angels were arguing, right? The guardian angel of the Holy Land, the Archangel Michael, was arguing with the guardian angel of Babylon, he says, because the one in Babylon said, finally, the light of the true God has shone forth in my region. Why, why are you taking them back now? There's no need for them to go back. And so he, he describes it as, a, as an argument that ensues. Uh, and St. Jerome is actually of the same idea. He says, you know, they, they have these discussions. He goes, don't think they have voices or, or mouths like we do, this and that, but they, there is this communication that is beyond our understanding. And it has to do with the welfare of the people.